The Tom Woods Show, episode 2313. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Hey everybody, Tom Woods here. I'm delighted to have the great, and that's with a capital G, the great Stu McLaren back with us. Stu, I had you on a year or two ago, but I think I got to know about you two or three years ago through a guy named John Lee Dumas. And I think, oh, you, yeah. I think you had a chapter in a book of his or something. I did. Yeah, there was a chapter. I'm just looking at my shelf. But I, yes, I was in a chapter in his book and we were talking about different ways in which we generate different types of revenue. And I was obviously talking about recurring revenue. And yeah, John's a great guy. Well, and Tom, I'm excited to be back, buddy. I love the work that you do. You got a great audience. And so I'm excited and grateful to be back. Well, you're a good man. I appreciate it. And by the way, I actually have three memberships and I launched my third one a little over a year ago. And the third one was the only one where, because the other ones are old. I didn't know about you yet, but I followed your whole program. I did the founding member launch. I evaluated whether I should have an open or a closed membership. I, I did the whole thing. I followed it to a T. So if people go to that membership and they've also listened to you, they're going to say, wait a minute. I thought Woods was super original. I think he learned. Yes, <laughs> I learned from Stu McLaren. I learned it from you because you, although you aren't with Wishlist anymore, you helped to create the software that powered something like 70,000 memberships. So I consider you to be the world's foremost expert on memberships. I know you're a humble guy, so you don't have to say <laughs> that. I'll say that for you. The reason I'm having you on is that I think the last time we talked, people were a bit disoriented because what happened with COVID, mm. traditional brick and mortar businesses really suffered because all of a sudden there were restrictions and people had to close down. Or even if there weren't restrictions, people were hesitant to come in. And so you faced challenges that I don't think anybody anticipated. Right. And so although your message is primarily the merits of recurring revenue, I mean, if you're going to go to the trouble of make one sale, why not make 12 sales or 36 sales while you're at it, as long as you're going to the trouble. But I think the thrust of your message is not just recurring revenue. Because I see recurring revenue at Circle K. They have a thing now where you pay $9.99 a month and get all the drinks you want. Or the trampoline park where my daughter Sarah just had her ninth birthday. For $10 a month, you can jump every day for three hours. I don't know why you'd want to, but you could do that for $10 a month. But I think if I'm not wrong about this, that your emphasis is on online, non-brick-and-mortar, membership-style recurring revenue. You're right about that, Tom. But I think in you sharing those examples about Circle K and about the trampoline park, and there are many others, what it shows is that businesses, no matter whether they are brick-and-mortar or service-based businesses or online businesses, what they're doing is they're really making a conscious shift toward incorporating more memberships and subscriptions. And to your point, there are really four different types of memberships to really begin opening people's minds to what's possible. So there's the product-based membership, and that's the business that is selling physical products. And probably the best example of this would be like the Dollar Shave Club. They sell razors. Now, there's companies that have sold razors for hundreds of years. What's the difference? Well, the Dollar Shave Club, they recognize that, wait a minute, like men need razors pretty much every month. So why don't we just sell them on subscription? And that's exactly what they did. And in a very short period of time, they went from this fledging little startup to selling for more than a billion dollars four years later. But there are all kinds of examples of product-based memberships, whether it's razors of the month, soap of the month, coffee of the month, tea of the month. You've got subscription boxes. And we have people in our community, as an example, like I think of Sarah Williams, she used to have a retail store and she just observed like, what are my best customers coming back and buying on a frequent basis? And then she had this epiphany moment. Well, wait a minute. What if I just package those things up into a subscription box and sell that on a monthly basis? And that's exactly what she did. And she expanded her reach from her local retail market to a national market with more than 3,000 plus monthly customers. So that's a good example of a product-based membership. Now, a service-based membership would be just like the trampoline park your daughter goes to because they could sell the service of them coming and use the trampoline park one time, or 
in the case of selling the subscription, they could sell it on a monthly basis and they know with certainty how much money they're going to make at the beginning of each and every month. There's a car wash right across the road from us. It's very similar. Again, they could sell access to the car wash one time. And they do, by the way, they sell it for $10. So you can go through the car wash one time for 10 bucks, or you could pay $12 a month and go through an unlimited number of times. And that's a great way to think about pricing. Look how they've done that. Like you can go through one time for 10 bucks or $12 a month to go through an unlimited number of times. It almost makes Pretty you feel awesome. like a sucker not having the membership. <laughs> exactly, right? So, but here's the fun part about that as a business owner. When I went and got my subscription, because our office is right across the road. So I was like, I want my car looking good all the time. So I got a subscription. And when I got mine, I asked, because I was curious how many subscribers they had. And at the time, they had over 3,000 monthly subscribers. And then a month later, because my car was looking spick and span, and my wife's like, well, can you just take my car through the car wash? And I said, no, base, I can't do that because the subscription is tied to the car. So like, we'd have to get one for your car. She's like, okay. So we went and got another subscription for her car. And when I went back in about a month and a half later, I asked again, I said, how many subscribers are you up to? She's like, it's crazy. It's been growing like a weed. She's like, but we're up to 4,500 plus customers. Now, time out for a second, Tom. Like, think about this. Every other car wash in the city is hoping that their clients and customers come back and buy from them again. But this car wash knows with certainty that 4,500 customers are going to be paying them at the beginning of every month. Now that changes things. That changes the way we think about our business. That changes the way we plan in our business. It changes the way that we invest in our business, the way that we can hire with confidence in our business. And that's why I'm a huge proponent of what we're talking about with memberships and subscriptions. So the first one is a product-based. Second is a service-based. Third one is a knowledge-based. This is the area that I spend most of my time serving clients with. And a knowledge-based membership is just like any of us who have acquired any experience or skills or perhaps we have passions in certain area and we want to share those with other people. We want to teach them. We want to help them solve ongoing problems. We can do that in a membership. And the beauty of it is, is that in today's world, there is no shortage of information available to people. And oftentimes I get asked the question, well, Stu, why would somebody pay to be a part of my membership when they could go to Google or they could go to chat GPT and they could ask any question as an example. But here's the truth of the matter. There is so much information that it becomes so overwhelming and confusing that people never experience progress. And the magic that you and I provide inside of our memberships is not the actual information itself. It's helping people process the information to get the result. We help provide clarity. We help provide direction. And that's why people pay because they go from where they are to where they want to be so much faster and easier with our guidance in a knowledge-based membership. Does that make sense, Tom? No question about it. I mean, for example, I have a lot of homeschoolers in my community. And yeah, if you want all the knowledge you want on homeschooling, you could sit in front of a search engine all day, but you wouldn't know, well, how do I want to talk to real people who have tried this method versus that method, or I have this special case where with a particular kind of student, what do I do in this special case? And it's vastly better to have a community. Now, can I take a guess that the fourth kind is a community-based membership? You nailed it, buddy. I that's just made exactly that up, it. by the way. I assumed that's what it had to be. <laughs> you nailed it. And here's the thing, like community-based memberships have been around for years. We just may not have consciously thought of them as this, but you know, it's essentially where people are paying to be part of a community of people who have a shared interest. This might be the old traditional like country club as an example, right? Like people pay to essentially be around a group of people on a regular basis, but these can be pop up around all kinds of different unique interests. And that's what I think is one of the most beautiful and unique things about the internet is that you can have an absolute unique and obscure and unusual passion or interest. And in your own local community, you might be the only one. But when you go online, you soon realize there are thousands of people who share this same interest. And when you find others who have that interest, it's like an instant connection. You're like, oh, these are my people. This is exactly where I want to be. 
And that's why people are more than willing to pay to be part of those community-based memberships. So those are the four, product-based, service-based, knowledge-based, and community-based. And what this does is it opens up so many options for all of us, regardless of the type of business that you may have or the type of business that you wish to have. Well, here's the big obstacle that I would say most people starting a membership would have. There are going to be some people who will say, oh, well, I am an accountant, and so maybe I could give some tax advice. Or I'm a school teacher, and my membership could be I give out lesson plans every month or something like that. But maybe you're somebody saying, well, I'm not really sure I have anything. Or even if I do, aren't there already 25 other people out there teaching the same thing I am? So these kinds of things tend to shut people down and think, nah, I can't do it. Yeah, and it's interesting because there are always going to be thoughts and limiting beliefs that can either hold us back or motivate us to charge forward. And I'll give you an example. So there's a woman, her name is Sabine Lackner, and she had been in the corporate world for 20 plus years. She and her husband decide to have kids and she goes on a sabbatical. And so she's working way less from a regular work week to less than 20 hours a week. Now, as her sabbatical is coming to an end, She's in this like hard spot now where she's got to decide, like, does she go back into the corporate world or does she make a shift and change in life? And the reality of it was, is she was really enjoying being at home with her child and working kind of part time. So she didn't really want to go back. And so in this moment, though, during that time when she was caring for her child away from work, she really just started to pick up her passion for art and specifically like drawing animals. And her drawings, Tom, are phenomenal. Like she, and so she would share them and she didn't have an audience of people who were passionate about animal art or anything of that nature. She didn't have an audience of people who loved to draw and were trying to learn from her. She was just openly sharing her artwork that she was doing. And suddenly one day somebody asked her after she shared one of those drawings, they said, would you ever be open to teaching me how to draw these kinds of animals. And that's not something that Sabine had ever thought about, right? But this question popped up and now it planted the seed of, well, sure, I guess I could probably figure out how to teach it. And slowly but surely, she started to share more of her techniques and tricks that she had learned along the way. And then there was this moment when she thought, well, I wonder if there are others who would like to learn how to do this. And that's when all the self limiting beliefs kind of popped into her mind, all those self-doubts. Would people be willing to pay her to do this? Who is she to teach this? She doesn't, hasn't gone to art school or she's self-taught. Like, who is she to teach this stuff? And then here's the kicker of it all. English is not her native language. She actually speaks German. And so she had all these limiting beliefs of like, oh my gosh, like, are people going to want to listen to me? Maybe my accent is going to be a turnoff for people. So she had all these limiting beliefs that could potentially hold her back. And then the final kicker was that she didn't have an audience. She didn't have an audience of people who were clamoring for her stuff. She had a teeny tiny audience of about 200 people that just over time had expressed interest in what she was doing. But here's the magic. She committed and decided to move through those limiting beliefs and those self-doubts. And she did a founding member launch, just like you talked about, Tom. And she ended up welcoming 17 members, 17 members, which was amazing. But then that created momentum. And a few months later, she did another launch and welcomed 35. And then a few months later, she did another one and welcomed 120. And then another 80 and then another 120. She now has more than 370 members generating over $7,000 a month in recurring revenue. She did not go back to that corporate world. Now she spends her time doing the thing that she loves, which is drawing and teaching others about it. Who would have known that that was possible if she had let her limiting beliefs prevent her from moving forward? And so, Tom, when I hear people who've got passions, who've got experiences, who've got skills, they doubt themselves. Who would want to listen to me? Who am I to teach this stuff? My advice is just 
start putting it out there and see. Like, there's no lost energy or effort, so to speak, because as the great Nelson Mandela would say, you either win or you learn. And in both cases, they move you forward. And so there's so many stories that I could share of people like Sabine. But the point of the matter is, is that you don't have to have a big, gigantic audience of tens of thousands or thousands. As I said, Sabine had an audience of less than 200 people, and the 17 founding members created the momentum that eventually, 17 months later, led to 370 plus members and more than $7,000 in recurring revenue each and every month. One thing I've done for some of my folks, because, you know, I have a bit of an audience, but I, boy, I have been working away at that for a very long time, but I, I have achieved it. I've reached a point where I have a big newsletter list. I actually have two different newsletters. I have this podcast. As you heard at the beginning, I'm at over 2,300 episodes. I reach a decent number of people. So yes. when people work specifically with you, I want them to work with non-fly-by-night people. You are not a fly-by-night character at all. You know this stuff inside and out. I learned from you, even though people think they should learn from me, I learned it from you. And so what I have done the past year or two is people in my audience who work with you, I say to them, I'll help you find the audience because I've got a pretty big one myself. And so I'll send out the link to whatever it is you're doing, whatever membership you're launching. You tell me when you want to launch it and I will get people, I'll get eyeballs over there. I have 160,000 Twitter followers. I have a it's proprietary how many people are on my mailing list, but let's say it's a lot, okay? It's a pretty big town or a small city, put it that way. <laughs> and I will send that out to them as a gift to people who have, you know, listened to me over the years and stuck with me. This is my way of, as they say, giving something back. So if the concern is, well, I don't have an audience, well, you don't have to because I do. That's how I've been at least taking away that particular limiting belief. I don't have an audience. Well, maybe you don't but you can build one over time, but I'll give you a head start by giving you exposure to my audience. Mm, I absolutely love it, Tom. I love the way in which you show up for your community. And there's a lot of lessons to draw from that because this is why people come back and listen to you. This is why you are on episode 2000 plus for your podcast. This is why that newsletter list continues to grow. It's because you are continuously thinking about your audience. You are continuously thinking about how do I show up for them? How can I serve them? How can I help them? And at the end of the day, that's what running a membership is about. We get paid to help people experience progress in their life and we get paid to help make them happy each and every month. And as long as people are happy, then they're going to stay. And as long as they stay, we have a very profitable business. So I love this business model for the sole reason that our accountability is helping people experience progress. That's why you have been around for so long, Tom. This is why you've experienced so much success and it's a credit to you. And there's a lot of lessons that your audience can pull from that. And oh my gosh, what an absolutely amazing way to serve your audience, which is like, hey, listen, leverage my audience. I will share what you're doing and help you get that jump start to your audience membership. And I think it's a beautiful way in which you serve your people. So kudos to you. And oh my gosh, that is a great opportunity for people. Well, I appreciate that. As we wrap up, I want to tell people that the timing on this conversation is not mere happenstance. It's not a coincidence. It's very specifically, I decided this very specifically. First of all, I am, let's see, what is the date when people will hear this? Probably hear this over the weekend or early next week. So it's roughly 11 years since I started my own membership site for the first time. So I'm celebrating 11 years of doing wow. the very thing I urge other people to do right at this time, at this moment in April. But the other reason that I'm doing it now is that every year you do this big free workshop. Yep. And I know people are kind of jaded when it comes to free workshop. They I know what the free workshop is. It's 30 minutes of okay stuff and 30 minutes of pitching me. But your free workshop, my mother went to it. And she wrote to me in the middle of it and said, he's still going. <laughs> she could not believe how much stuff you taught people in that workshop. And I got emails then from strangers saying, okay, I wasn't so sure about this whole thing. Then I went to the thing and I listened to this guy and I just can't get over it. I cannot get over what I just got and it didn't cost me a cent. So I do want to urge people to 
sign up to do it, to just, just tune it. You know, there's no harm in listening. And you'll, at the very least, you'll learn some stuff that will serve you well in almost anything you do. So the link to sign up, it's a free thing and it is going to, I, if it does not knock your socks off, I owe you a Coke. And that's not a, an empty promise, by the way. I once made a pledge on this show where I said, I have this episode coming up on such and such topic. And if you don't like it, I owe you a Coke. I literally ran into a fan on the street who said, by the way, I didn't like that episode. <laughs> we went in, I bought him a Coke. We got a picture of it. We posted it on Facebook. So if you don't find value in what Stu is doing, send me a thing. I'll send you a voucher for a Coke or whatever. But the link is, it's so easy to remember. His name's Stu McLaren. So the link is tomwoods.com slash Stu. So you're going to instantly go over there. And if not for you, then think about your kids growing up in a world where it's not 1957 anymore. You get a job and you stick with it for 50 years and they have a big retirement party for you. This is a much weirder kind of world and economy in which things are changing all the time. And you want, if not for yourself, you want your kids to have some kind of thing they can fall back on if their main thing collapses. And maybe the thing they fall back on someday becomes their main thing. But my point is that even if you're not convinced this is for you, although I think it is, you have kids, you have nieces and nephews, you have friends, who are going out into a very, very unpredictable world and you can buttress them and give them a kind of security by giving them this knowledge. So again, the link is tomwoods.com slash Stu. Stu, I know that especially with the workshop coming up, your time is ridiculously valuable. So I will not keep you a moment longer, but thank you so much for being here, at least briefly with my folks today. Well, Tom, I appreciate you, buddy. And I'm excited for everybody to come join us for the free workshop. Because at the end of the day, here's what you're going to experience. We're going to break down what a membership looks like. How do you structure the membership? How would you market the membership? Here's a fun fact. There will even be people who will launch their memberships during the free workshop. And I know that sounds crazy. And I hope that Mrs. Woods comes back and joins us again. Because I believe there's probably a membership idea inside of her that we are definitely going to help her get out. But the point of the matter is, is that this is not a fluff workshop. This is a workshop where we get down and we go through exactly what you need to do to begin launching your membership. And as I said, there will be people that will launch it during the workshop itself. And my hope is that you listening, that's you. And the only way that can happen, though, is if you come and join us. So make sure you definitely go to tomwoods.com forward slash Stu, and Stu is spelled S-T-U, S-T-U. Tom, thanks so much, buddy. I appreciate you. Thanks, Stu. In fact, I'm going to be on it this year myself because I can only deal with so many years of people telling me how great it is. So, Because <laughs> uh, I've been on some shorter webinars with you, but I've never been there for the annual workshop. And as somebody who has a brand new membership, I'm always learning. I'm shifting it, by the way, from closed to open. Okay. Because closed, I think, made for a big, big splash when I first opened it because it's a limited thing. And if you get in at the beginning, you get a big discount, but I have to limit that. Now that I think that part is over, now I'm going to have it generally be open. But I'm so glad I took your advice on it because I would say the current membership I have has changed a lot of people's lives, has helped them build businesses and acquire a lot of helpful skills. But I couldn't have done that if I didn't reach as many people as I could and by following what you recommend. And again, people in that group are going to, if they go to your workshop, they're going to say, oh, geez, this is exactly what Tom did. Yes, it is. And it works. So tomwoods.com slash Stu is the link. Thanks again, Stu. Best of luck this year. Thank you, my friend. I can't wait to see you there. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit tomwoods.com to subscribe to the show for free. And we'll see you next time. Like the sound of The Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at podsworth.com.